You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today I want to talk about focusing on getting feedback from your clients. I think this is really vital and it's often underutilized. So one of the ways that we can get feedback from our client is simply by asking them about feedback. Can you tell me a little bit about our sessions? Are they as good for you as they are for me? Are you enjoying our time together? Things like that. But I think a lot of times having these open conversations are really good, but sometimes sending a survey is something that allows people to briefly do something, but also take their time if they want to actually provide feedback, or maybe they don't feel as comfortable saying it to your face as they would be uh, writing it down. Because <clears throat> I think in in personal training, a lot of times there's a power differential where the trainer is in control. Now, yeah, sure, your clients are paying the money, but they're looking at you. I have I have a guy that apologizes when he has to take a break while pushing himself really hard. He looks at me and goes, "Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry." I'm like, "Uh, it's okay. It's fine. It's it's okay." Right? There's a some kind of power differential there where we're in a power position and sometimes having the conversations that you want to have with your clients <clears throat> to get the feedback that you want from your clients are not as easily done if you just try to talk. But if you create a survey, an online survey, which can be very simple and very easy and very inexpensive, then you can get the feedback from your clients. And you may wanna know, like, what are some of the things that you're really looking for? What do your clients really think about your personal training? What do they really think about professionalism? and intensity and your attention to detail and your timeliness and your punctuality and uh, you, your your tidiness, your the you know, do I smell bad? Like are there things that I need to know that you're not telling me? Do you know am, am I not brushing my teeth? in the morning and I show up with morning breath. And like, this is stuff that you're, some of you are like, oh my gosh, that's so gross. And some of you are like, oh, I don't, I just drink coffee and hope my breath smells like coffee. Well, that doesn't do it either, right? So what, what are some things that you can get some feedback from your clients that would really open up, uh, I think, a conversation with your clients, but also shift the way that you think of yourself. Because a lot of times we put ourselves in a position where we're like, I think I'm doing things pretty well. And you get feedback from your client and maybe you're not. Or I don't think that I'm doing things very well. And you get feedback from your clients and there are zero complaints and everybody loves what you're doing and they have a wonderful time with you. Well, all of it is great. All of it is information that we would like to have. <clears throat> so I think... One of the things that makes me think of this is a lot of times clients will leave, they disappear. And, and as a business owner, this is particularly true because I have a lot more patrons than I do personal training clients. And when people leave, they don't tell you why. When people stop showing up at your business, they don't tell you why they don't show up. They just find an alternative and sit and they pontificate whether or not they should go. And it's a hassle to try to find a new location and to try to get into another facility or to get another trainer. And yet they disappear. And why is that? And if you don't know the answer, because you're they're not going to tell you. So it's better to find out. You can do an exit survey, like why did you leave? I'd like to know more about why you're no longer here. Why? Why did you? Why did you leave me? Don't, don't leave me. You can come back, right? Why are they gone? And then um, maybe that can help. First of all, just sending out a survey <clears throat> allow people to stay with you longer because they know that you're trying to get feedback and you're trying to be informed and you want to learn more and you want to do better and be better uh, as a trainer, as a professional, at your career, occupation, whatever this is for you right now. 
can I be better at it? And one of the better ways to do that is to get feedback from my clients and let me know what their experience is. Um, and so I'm going to share with you just a, a survey that I recently did for my gyms. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, a survey I recently did for my gyms. But I also then want to share a potential survey, this concept that you could utilize, uh, not for gyms, but for you as personal trainers. So uh, my recent survey for my gym locations in Manhattan, I said, uh, which location are you re re reviewing today? Now, this is a new survey for me. I've never used this before. So it's a list of my, my four locations that they can pick which one that they train at. Now, what I did not know, and this is where I messed up, and you find this out as you go along, is that this is just one answer in a list of answers. So when I got feedback, it didn't say, oh, you're Soho location. These are all the answers and feedback that went to that location. So when I got feedback, I kind of had to figure out what was going on uh, and, and, and you know, suss out which location they're talking about when they wrote down their feedback. All right. So, um, so which one are you reviewing today? The second question is how satisfied are you with the cleanliness of the gyms? And then I put into parentheses, bathrooms, floors, dust bunnies, mats, uh, equipment, mirrors, shower sinks, nooks and crannies, et cetera. Alexa, stop. All right. It's time for something to happen, but I just don't know what it is. An alarm has been set. Oh, my goodness, Alexa. I have to leave. Okay. My Alexa's been troublesome lately, so I just unplugged her. Um, and so also when you're putting together these surveys, and I know that was kind of a long question, but it was... Um, it's none of these are necessarily specifics. It's ideas of what I needed. So here's a list, bathroom, floor, dust bunny, mats, equipment. Uh, and people can glance over that and go, oh yeah, the floors or the, the bathrooms are filthy, right? Like, oh man, then I need, I need that feedback. But ultimately the surveys really do need brief, to be brief and they need to be to the point. You need to get to it because nobody wants to open up a multi- uh, question, a uh, lot of feedback and content, and what are you trying to get to now? Like, no. When people open up survey, brief and to the point, so I suggest no more than five questions, and then make sure your five questions are really answering the questions that you want to answer. So for me, <clears throat> the facility cleanliness and tidiness is vitally important. That's vital. That for me is the one of the most important things. So like safety, yes, the most important thing, but that's kind of you set your places up to be safe. And then like, are they clean? So which location, how satisfied are you with the cleanliness? How satisfied are you with the equipment that you that we have at uh, ITS locations? And so, uh, and that's kind of on a, you know, the first one that I do, how satisfied are you with cleanliness on a scale of one to five, one being filthy and five being next to godliness, right? How satisfied you are you with the equipment? Uh, terrible. And who could ask for anything more? So these are kind of like, I'm just trying to keep it fun. Even when you log in, you kind of want to go to the next question just to see what that Likert scale is going to say from one to, to five. So the next question is, what can we do better based on the feedback above? Now, this is a fill in the blank. What can we do better? And then I said, um, the gyms in general, management, trainer and cleaner experience, cleanliness, tidiness, smells, communications, all the things, end quote. So all the things I put in there trying to create light and levity, but give me what we need to make this a better place. Make it a better place. All right, also, the last one was a question that says, also, we wouldn't mind hearing what you think we are doing well. Thank you for your feedback. And then again, it's an area where they can actually fill in and give me information about the gyms. Well, this is great for the gyms, and if you're a business owner, then please take this template, take the exact questions, um, get a different set of questions that answer your needs over what this is. Um, 
find a better one. This is just me. It doesn't mean this is the best survey. This is just what, what I ask. But what about as a trainer? <clears throat> First of all, what you're probably asking is how can I possibly do this? And so what I went to is I, I had a place, uh, I used a website that was free called surveyplanet.com. Now that's just what I use. There's numerous free um, survey, online survey things that you can use. And then of course you can pay to upgrade and get greater feedback and results and insights. And that's all great. And this is not a plug, a financial plug for Survey Planet. It's just, that's what I used for this. <clears throat> so you can use something like that, which is going to be free. It won't cost you anything. And yet you will be able to get some really vital information about the, the work that you're doing. So as a trainer survey that I'm putting together, here are a few of the current questions that I may or may not use, and I'm not sure which one, but it says on a scale of one to five. Um, I'm, and, from, and one being I'm bored, and five is you can take my pulse from my teeth. The question is, how intense are our workouts? And so what I want to do is I want to find out how intense they are, but then I need to get feedback in a few questions later. Give me some feedback about what that means. And if I got individual feedback and I say, oh, you say you're, you're on a scale of five, you can take your pulse from your teeth, your heart is beating so strong, it's coming through your enamel. I need to know when you responded to that, is that what you want? Do you want that type of workout? Because I can give that to you or it's not enough or you're right in the middle, let's say you're a three on a scale of one to five, I give a three on intensity. Well, that might not be what you want. You might want to ratchet it up and really build an intensity so that you feel like you're getting your money's worth. All right, so I just want some feedback on that. Uh, I also, next question, does Rick provide enough variety while still being focused on exercise progressions? So look, is it is it different every session or are we focusing on some things? Are we not focusing on enough different things or are there things that you just hate? Um, so that could be one. Uh, how engaged and focused on you and your form am I during our sessions? So um, I, I know because I train out of my own gyms and a lot of times, especially first thing in the morning, uh, I can give somebody a warm up and I walk away and there's a towel on the floor from the night before, there are cups left out and I'm tidying up and and poor Terry is left on her own to, to do her own kind of warm up as I've instructed her and I've given her what to do. But now I got to walk away and pick up some stuff. I'm going to get feedback from Terry and she's like, listen, I know that the you're distracted in the morning because you want to come in and make sure that the place is nice. But, you know, I'm paying for this session and I don't want you to go around picking up towels while I'm doing some of my, my warmups. And I get that. I get that. So get that feedback and find out. Or she's like, I know what to do for the warm up. Go ahead and clean up. And uh, when it, we're ready to start banging out a workout, let's get to it. And then I'm there for it. Um, Fill in the blank here, which is please let me know what I can do differently that would make your training experience better. And this is not on a scale of one to five. This is a fill in the blank question. What can I do to make your training experience better? And, you know, uh, and you can put a parenthetical in there. Uh, attention, results or outcomes, right? Are you, you're training a lot, but are you getting the outcomes? What can I do? Am I not focused enough on getting your outcomes, right? And so we need to be a results-based training uh, and see if we're actually getting those results or you feel like you're getting the results that you want, that you came to me for. And then the last question I have, it says this quote, stroke my ego a bit and let me know what you like about our sessions. And that way I'm getting some feedback and I certainly like to have them end on a positive note so that they also leave the survey thinking what they enjoy about our time together and not what is being done incorrectly or poorly or, or not up to snuff for them. 
so that they say, all right, well, I mean, you know, I still really like training with you. No matter, no matter all the things that I said, I still really like working with you. But I got to say, like, put, put your ego on the line and focus on your clients and get feedback. <clears throat> this really came because I was having a business meeting with somebody and we were going to invite a group of people and immediately uh, we talked about something. I wonder how they're going to feel about that. And the guy goes, we'll get that from the survey right after. And I thought, man, he just, at any event, boom, a survey goes out. At any event, boom, a survey goes out. At any moment, a survey goes out. And I remember hearing um, somebody years ago at a conference and she said, how does anybody make their business any better if they're not doing surveys and getting feedback from their clients or getting feedback from their patrons, getting feedback from their members or their class attendees? And so we need to get feedback from our clients. And got to be honest, look, you're not going to, you know, satisfy everybody. I've got <clears throat> I've got 3 dozen I love this place it's super clean and one the bathrooms are nasty. I'm like, wow. That's a there's going to be some variety there. And sometimes the bathroom is nasty. But if you happen to be there every time the bathroom's nasty for you, the bathroom is always nasty. So now what do I do? I say, okay, well, is that in the evening when nobody else is around and there's been a peak, but nobody is there doing cleanup at that hour at our facilities? <clears throat> what can we do on our part that makes your experience better or your client's experience better? All right. That's all I got for you. We just need to get some feedback, better understand what's going on in our clients' minds about our business and what we do and what we produce. And don't be the person that goes, uh, it doesn't matter what you think of the workout. This is the workout. This is who I am. This is what I do. Because that is not client focused. That is you focused. That is trainer focused. That is program focused. It is not individual focused. And focusing on an individual does require that you still focus on a program. It does require that you still focus on your education and your know how and your understanding. But if you don't have that touch point with a client that allows you to better understand who you're training and what they feel about it, then you're missing a vital component. All right. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, hit me up. You can on uh, Instagram at dr.rickritchie, or you can email me at rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Y'all keep inspiring people to fitness and make sure you're inspiring them by doing a survey and getting feedback about it. All right. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast. <laughs>